Very pleased to uh, welcome to uh, America Now our next guest, and that is uh, Tara Galliano. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And uh, Tara, you are a sex therapist. I am. I'm a sex therapist. I get to talk to people about sex all day long. <laughs> How Are you a married lady? I am a married lady. I've been with my husband for 20 years. Well, well, congratulations on that. I'm just thinking if you're talking about it all day, then when you get home, <laughs> it just popped into my head. This is how my brain works anyway. You know, about the last thing you're going to want to talk to him about is that. Well, that's okay because we don't always have to talk about it. We can just do it. There you, there you go. So uh, how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been in private practice for 12 years, and for the past six years I've focused on sex therapy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and was there an, uh, an epiphany moment when you thought, I know? Yes. There was? I, see, I saw so many clients who wanted to talk about their sexual orientation, their sexual preferences, their relationships. And as a graduate student, I had actually no classes on human sexuality. So I thought I needed to get up to speed and really get educated. So I became certified as a sexologist. And then earlier this year, actually, I got certified as a sex therapist. So, did you have a business card that said sexologist? I did. <laughs> Board certified sexologist, yes. Michelle wants one of those. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> Michelle wants one of those. Uh, okay, so, uh, so tell me, who goes to sex therapy? That's a great question. It's, I find, adults who are courageous enough to talk about sex with a stranger. Uh, ultimately, people don't know me, and they open up to me and talk to me about all sorts of intimate details of their life. And I really respect their honesty and courage to come and talk about sex. See, a lot of us would think that was creepy. Uh, to talk about sex with a stranger. <laughs> with a stranger, yeah. <laughs> I think it could be. But ultimately, I'm an expert in the area, and I help people have better sex. You know, maybe maybe I'm just overly sensitive, uh, having raised two two daughters on my own. So, uh, you know, they're still not allowed to date, by the way. I've got signed contracts from both of them. They are they are signed in crayon, but uh, I still think they're legally binding. Um, so, okay, <clears throat> this is the question that uh, uh, Michelle. I hope you're paying attention because I know this is the one you wanted it, wanted an answer to. Uh, what happens in sex therapy? That is a great question because a lot of people get concerned that they're going to have to take off their clothes, and it's actually not like that at all. What I do is talk therapy, so people are just talking about sex. And I actually think that it's really difficult to talk about sex because what I find is it's easier for people to have sex than to find the vocabulary to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you must have had some some creepy moments, though. I mean, I'm, I'm just... Al, I think uh, my imagination might be running a bit wild here, but I'm assuming you've had some creepy moments. Well, you know, it's interesting because I would have to say I never actually have... By the time people have called me, made the appointment spoken to me about what they want to come see me about. I feel like they're really, um, yeah, they're really honest people. They're everyday, ordinary folks. I'd say the creepier part is screening the phone calls to get them into my office. I get some weird phone calls, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I've told Michelle to stop calling you, but I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. Uh, we're talking to uh, Tara Galliano. She is a sex therapist. You can join that conversation and maybe ask her a question as long as it's broadcastable on 877-927-ANDY, 877-927-2639. Uh, you know, Michelle always talks, by the way, when we're on the air. It's really interesting how quiet she's being right now. Um, so uh, what, what are some of the general issues that clients come to see you about? As a sex therapist, the bread and butter issues that I see are erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, um, desire discrepancies, and inhibited sexual desire. So mm -hmm. the last two are really about um, people not wanting to have sex or one of the partners wanting to have sex and the other partner not wanting to have sex. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's usually the root cause of that? Well, it's interesting because it's actually a lack of desire is not necessarily due to boredom or age. It's actually because the intimacy has left their relationship. Uh, romantic love and sexual chemistry are short-lived and unstable. I'd say, you know, the honeymoon period ends for most people after about a year, and then they have to go into a deeper sense of being with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the date night is important, yeah? You are right on. That's exactly what I prescribe. I ask people to have date nights. Oftentimes, 
people or couples get into this pattern where every touch is a demand for intercourse, and then they don't know how to be affectionate with each other, and they don't know how to slow down and just relax and be romantic with each other. They don't know how to court each other. Mm-hmm. So, so date night and a cuddle. A cuddle, yes. Oftentimes in heterosexual couples, women really like to cuddle and men like to proceed for the intercourse. They like to go for the orgasm, and it's really about the cuddling for a lot of women. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, oh, we're talking to uh, Tara Galliano. She's a sex therapist, and uh, uh, you, you're in. Um, where are you? I've, I've forgotten. Where are you? you're in Colorado, aren't you? Correct. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. There you go. I, I didn't forget. I thought I forgot, but I didn't. Uh, so um, you can uh, you can ask her a question. We must make sure it's broadcastable at eight seven seven nine two seven Andy eight seven seven nine two seven twenty six thirty nine. If you're uh, if you if you'd rather email it to me, you can do that at Simon Talk Show or one word Simon Talk Show at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try and get that question to uh, to Tara. Okay, Tara. So, uh, who do you see more of, men or women? Ironically enough, I see a lot of men. When couples come to me, they're oftentimes in a heterosexual, monogamous couple, so I see fairly traditional couples. If an individual is going to come to me, oftentimes I see men who are struggling with erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Normally, you would expect them to uh, go to a doctor as opposed to a therapist if they had that problem. I mean, a lot of men would regard that as a physical problem. We're all aware of the little blue pills that are available now. Yes, yes, Uh and I I would agree with you. I think we need to rule out biological basis for erectile dysfunction, and when they've figured that out, that there is no biological basis or that's been handled, then often there are psychological symptoms that still linger. And so Mm -hmm. they feel anxious about, are they going to be able to sustain an erection? Are they even going to be able to have an erection? And so there's a lot of psychological issues in terms of anxiety that I need to work with them with. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the top three uh, things you you see people about? Absolutely, Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, What's what's the weirdest question you've ever been asked? That's a good question. The weirdest question I've ever. Been I asked. try and only have good questions. I, you know, I, I kind of try and throw away the bad ones so that we only bring the good ones on the air. Yeah, the weird. I, you know, I don't. Um, let's see. I guess I don't ask any, um, or I don't answer any personal questions with my clients. It's really about them, um, and I'll get a lot of clients who are confused. Well, actually, I'll tell you one story. I had one client who came in, and she had this myth. I think oftentimes people have sexual myths that influence their behavior, and she had always believed that she could get pregnant from sitting on her neighbor's couch. And even though she consciously knew that wasn't true, um, we had to work around having to figure out how she could um, work with that issue because she had internalized that as a teenager, that her mother said, don't go over the neighbor's house, don't sit on the couch. And she had thought that she could get pregnant from sitting on the couch, and that's why her wow. mother wanted to sit. On and yet, and yet, the logical part of her brain said that well, this is clearly patently ridiculous, and yet she still had an issue with it. She still had an issue, and it's interesting because it brought up all sorts of issues for her, but sexual, sexual issues. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. All right, what are the top three tips that you might want to give to uh, some of our listeners who are listening right now? Well, one of the biggest tips I have is that sexual sex is more than intercourse. It's more than um, orgasm. Sex, I see, is a whole menu of behaviors, activities, interactions, and I think that most people really need to broaden their perspective on what sex is. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's number one for sure. And then number two, I think that couples really need to integrate non-demanding pleasuring, which is touch, affection, and they also need to include erotic scenarios and techniques in their repertoire of being together. And I think that's really important. So looking at how they're together when they're not having sex, but all the Mm -hmm. other um, behaviors that they have with each other. And then the third piece is that this is a process. I think that's really important, that they're working together as a team and that um, benign neglect, when they don't actively look at their sex and sexuality, um, then sometimes it's, you know, it undercuts their sexual desire, then they're not feeling erotic with each other. So it really takes some work, like you were mm-hmm. suggesting with dates. That's, that's a great idea. 